All right, Coach, I think we're ready to get going here. Um, why don't you just, like we normally do, just get us started, your thoughts on this past weekend, and um, then we'll take some questions. I loved our approach. Uh, really loved the way we practiced last week. Uh, thought we got a lot better in a lot of areas. Um, Saturday's game, when you look at the statistics, <laughs> you almost have twice as many first downs. You have tons more yards. The same defense holds us to 180 yards last year. We get a well over 400 yards. Even the first half when we come away with no points, we did have movement of the football down into an area where we can't have points. We take a sack, so instead of kicking a field goal, we got to punt it. We throw an interception, so instead of having an opportunity for points there, we turn the ball over. Um, defensively, really strong in the run game, which we needed to be. All right, held them fairly in check the whole day running the football. They hit a couple early on us where we lost leverage. But other than that, we really did a nice job against a team that's going to run the ball at you. But what we talked about all week, the reverse, the launch plays, the hammer plays that we knew is how they produce points. They run the same reverse. They run against Marshall the same reverse. We practice all week. It's an eight-yard loss in practice, and it's a 60-yard touch on the game. And credit to Kent State for the execution, not credit to us. And that's the fine line between winning and losing. We can say, oh, we thought the defense played really good and kept us in the game. OK, that's, that's true. But we got to stop the reverse play. And then the one pass play, we were a lot of guys out of position on the one dig route. They throw a dig route for 40-yard touchdowns just poor pass coverage. Our pass coverage wasn't necessarily bad all day, but it was very poor on that one play. And we took some bad angles, and, and we give up another big play. So two big plays, or we can hold them to six points and, and really have a great, great chance to win the game. Then offensively, obviously, carved out a little bit of a run game more than a year ago. Most of it was running Gus, but it, quarterback runs are part of our system. We're always going to run our quarterback, just about like everybody else in the country is doing. So we did carve out some yardage in the run game. Uh, and then had tons of opportunities in the pass game and, and threw for a bunch of yards but didn't have a lot to show for. Missed opportunities with poor route running at times. At times we had great route running. Missed opportunities with poor protection. We got guys running post routes behind everybody and we don't have time to get them the ball. Missed opportunities with inaccurate throws. All right, so the, the accumulation, the thing I liked about our offense is we had we played them a year ago, didn't have many opportunities to score, didn't really have many guys open, didn't really have any run game. We ran it enough to be effective, and we had plenty of opportunities, and we got more touches and more targets for Roe and for Huddy and for, for Sam and got more shots down the field, which was a huge emphasis this week. So I loved our approach structurally offensively, and I think there was opportunities. We got 400-plus yards. There was opportunities to get 600 yards. All right. At the end of the day, it's about mental toughness. It's about execution. All right. It's not about anything else. Our kids play hard. Our kids play hard. They don't quit, OK? That's, and that's fantastic. And that's, that's a big part of being a successful football team. But we talked all week about mental toughness. And mental toughness comes down to executing your assignment on every down. And we're still a long ways away from that, all right? And, and in key situations, we give up a couple big plays for no reason. And in key situations, we don't, we don't make the plays offensively that we need to make to instead of Having a great come from behind victory, we have a another narrow defeat. And people have asked me about, well, they just got to learn how to win. Well, there's, you know, you guys play by tough. You just can't get over hump. There's to me, there's no learning how to win. There's executing all game because you execute in the first quarter. We don't turn the ball over. We got points on the board. There's a different outcome, right? You execute in the second quarter on a reverse play. There's a different outcome. It's not just the last drive. It's the whole game. And there's mistakes that. Kent State physically won battles, and credit to Kent State. All right, there's always going to be that part of the football game, and you don't, you try to lift and get stronger and get faster. But those are always you're not going to win every physical battle. But when you lose a mental battle because you don't do your job that you know how to do, that's the mental discipline between good and great, or average and good. And again, you can be eight out of ten, but that ninth play gets us beat. And that ninth play, you don't know which one's going to be the touchdown. We felt it against Cincinnati. We gave up a 76-yard run on a mistake by us. It wasn't wasn't anything they did. We gave up a reverse on a mistake by us. All right? It wasn't we didn't have a guy that was responsible for reverse playing reverse. He was doing something else. And as I told the kids post game, if you want to get over the hump, you got to execute. There's you can get over the hump anytime you want. You got to execute. You got to have 
be in position when you're supposed to be in position and do it the way it's being coached. And, and we're going to keep driving it. We worked hard last week to get better at execution. At times, our execution was better, but we're still a long ways away. And we're going to keep plugging away one day at a time to execute at a higher level and keep being mentally and physically tough. Because that's, you know, when you play OU and you watch them, that's what they do. They execute. All right. They execute. Do they have good players? Yeah, they have good players. All right. But they have their systems in place. They know what they're doing and they don't beat themselves. And Coach Solich is a very smart football coach. He's won a lot of games for a lot of years and he knows. Like I always say, there's more games lost than won. So if you just execute your offense and defense and special teams, you're going to have a lot of success. You know, and they can win a high-scoring game. They can win a low-scoring game. And is it is it belief? Yes, yeah, some of it's belief because they've had some success, particularly this year, getting off to a good start. But it's also execution when the game's on the line. That's the that's the key part of it. If you just do what you're supposed to do, you're going to put yourself in position. And and we're still not doing that on enough consistent enough basis. And that's that's where we got to keep plugging away and keep heading. I get the impression that it's not the same players every week or every play. It's on one play, it's this guy maybe breaking down or not executing, and then on another play, it's this guy. Um, uh, is that is that is that an accurate assessment that it's just like across the board, um, one guy here, one guy there? Yeah, it's not positionally, and it's not one player, and that's standard. We we got to get more players playing at a consistent. We got to get down to where it is only a few players that we can point and say, hey, listen, everyone else is doing your job and you're not. We're still too inconsistent on both sides of the ball to to make enough plays to win games. Can we make enough plays to stay in games? Yeah, we've, we've done that on a fairly consistent basis, albeit a couple games haven't been close. But over the course of our time here, we've played teams very tough. And, and we're not talented enough yet to make more mistakes than the other team. We have to we have to play a cleaner game than the other team. You know, we're talented enough to play with teams. We're talented enough to beat teams. We have to we have to play a much cleaner football game, and we got to get mentally tougher as a football program. And the only way you do it is you keep practicing, and you keep putting kids in the same positions over and over, and get them used to doing it right all the time. And we have kids that are trying, but it's not it's not. There's a difference between trying and going to a center. We got a lot of kids that are very. Can you watch them practice? You know, you can be consistent, but that's the next step as a player to translate it to the test. You can't go out there and not do what you're you're supposed to do when the test is there. Even if you know the answers, you got to go go conduct and handle your business in the right way. And again, that's the mental part of the game. And there's a lot of there's a lot of moving parts in the game of football, but it's the same for everyone. And the great players and the great teams do it, and the non-great players and non-great teams don't do it. Have you seen? Improvement from the beginning of the season till now? Are they making fewer mistakes as the game goes yeah, on? Yeah, no, we, we showed there was a lot of improvement even on Saturday at times. I, obviously, it's tougher for our offense. There's a lot, lot less experience on our offense than there is on our defense. We have more experienced players that should play consistency at a higher level on defense. And at times we do. That's a frustrating thing. Saturday, we give up a couple cheap ones. And it's some of our oldest, most experienced guys that aren't doing what they're supposed to do. So, but there is a lot more consistency on that side of the ball. You know, then you go to the offensive side of the ball. There's, there, there is less experience, and there is, it is, it is a little bit harder. But we just got to keep pushing to keep making strides every week. And I think, I think we made a bunch of strides last week. Our offense through four weeks, we had more opportunities to make plays last week against a pretty stingy defense than we've had all year. There was tons of, and we made it. We moved. We had four plus yards of offense against a team that stopped Minnesota offensively you know so they're in Minnesota's a good football team you know but but we had our kids in the right positions and our kids were flying around and we had opportunity we made we made a fair amount of plays you don't get 400 plus yards and not make any plays but drive the ball drive the ball drive the ball illegal procedure holding penalty turnover 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 sack that's that's the difference so even even the first half we had not we had we had we should have had points on the board you know there should have been points on the board in the first half even a couple of field goals changes the whole complexion of the football game it doesn't have you fighting to come back from a three score deficit you know then even on the last drive we the last play we throw a pick there's a guy wide open we got Rokeem Williams open on a drag route we'd run the same route four plays early hit Rokeem for a first down but the second time around we forced the ball into coverage and if you force the ball into coverage at this level you turn the ball over there's two guys on the guy we try to throw it to. There's no one on Rokeem Williams. If we dump the ball down to Rokeem, we got the ball inside their 15 easily with 
a minute left and a chance to win a football game. We make that bad decision in that moment, and the game's over. And, and that's, that's, that's how it is. So they were in a good spot. We, we didn't make the good choice, and they made the play. Coach, a couple questions I got on Twitter this morning. I just want to run them by you. Where are you at when the amount of young guys that you're playing? Are you excited because you're playing all these young guys because of where they're going to be? Is it like, we're, 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 or is it we're playing all these young guys? You know, I wish I had more upperclassmen. I just think you 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 stay in the present. You know, I've told a lot of people I'm really excited about the long term future of Miami football. I'm ecstatic, but. We live in the presence. I'm not worried about 2016, 17, 18, 19, and 20. I'm worried about 2015. And you don't approach it as well, it's acceptable because they're young. Now, we have to continue. We talked about last week. we got to continue to look at ourselves and what we're asking our kids to do. I think last week we had a good balance. We weren't so vanilla that we were easy to defend or easy to attack, but we didn't have too much in our packages that our kids were – too much where we were going to slow them down because we have a lot on their plate mentally. So there's a fine line there. You don't you want to be as you know as basic as you can to keep them playing fast. But on the other hand, you don't want to be so basic that it's pretty easy to attack on both sides of the ball. So I thought we 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 really found some good balance there last week on both sides of the ball. All right. Now it's just the details and the the. the habits of every day of doing it right and consistently practicing the right way and then then getting the mindset to carry it over you know getting the mindset and getting the belief and the confidence and you gotta you gotta practice hard and and really fight through that but then you also gotta go on a saturday with a lot of belief you know so it there's there's a fine line but for me it's just staying in the present and trying to prepare your football team the best you can to have success this Saturday and beat Ohio University. That's the goal. They're, you know, we played a good game against them last year, uh, had a chance to win a game and, and, and didn't win a game. They play, you know, we outplayed them in the first half, they clearly outplayed us in the second half. You know, so we've got to learn our lessons. It's obviously a huge rivalry game, which makes it even more exciting. You know, like I said earlier today, we're fortunate we got two rivalry games. Most people only have one. It's really important to our fans. It's really important to the school. It's really important to the community. But it's also important to try to get to one on one league. I mean, that's that's the most important thing is to get to one on one in the league and put a loss on them. And we could be tied with them after Saturday in the conference race. You know, and, and we have every belief we have an opportunity to win this football game. We also know when we watch their tape, they're not going to give you the game. They're and they're watching our tape, saying, "Hey, just keep doing what we're doing. They probably will give us the game." That's what they're saying. They make mistakes. They're mistake oriented. They turn the ball over. They take sacks. They they, they you know they've been penalized too, but they they get inopportune penalties. They give up big plays on the defensive side of the ball, and that's all the things that a team like OU preys on. And in in their consistency and their level of execution is fantastic. You talked about some of the young players and having so many of them. Some of the guys coming along quicker than others, but Nate Becker, first touchdown. DeAndre Montgomery, I thought, had a really good game for you. Some of the young kids are really starting to move along. Yeah, and I thought I thought T.J. Williams played better at, at, at outside backer, who's a junior first-year starter for us. And then I thought DeAndre, I thought we were more active. We gave up some critical passes at that position, but I thought we were really active in the run game and made DeAndre made a huge stop on fourth down and made some other plays, and T.J., TJ, I think, as it's only his, was his fifth college game, I think he's getting more and more comfortable. We keep got to accelerating his learning curve and his, his. He's smart, but it's just to go out there and cut it loose on Saturday and don't play tentative because you're a new starter, you know. And then obviously DeAndre being a true freshman, he's in the same boat. So, just we got more production out of that position. We got to continue to get more production because those are two kids that are good athletes that can can make plays for our defense. And obviously Nate Becker, obviously the touchdown was huge. He cut it to 2014 and put us in a position with one more stop to get the ball back and win a game. Uh, his run blocking has been tremendous for a freshman, for, for a redshirt freshman at the point of attack. He's done really well. I'm really excited about how good he's going to be at the point of attack down the road, but he's really doing a nice job for us. And obviously, you know, Ryan Smith also, as, as a true sophomore, has is, is, had some huge catches in that game to either put us in position to score or keep drives alive. Uh, so we're getting some good production uh, out of that position for sure.